house besides Sister Johanna. Um, she's big on note taking, which is a beautiful thing. But the reason why it's important, especially with scriptures like these, is because you need it is written scriptures. You need them. The enemy is always going to attack. The enemy is not going to stop attacking. So you need scriptures that are literally going to put you in a position to fight back in his realm. What do I mean by his realm? The spiritual realm. You can't fight the enemy physically. I don't care how strong you are. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how many degrees you have, how educated you feel. You can't fight the enemy physically. You got you to gotta literally get into the spirit and fight him spiritually. Amen. Yes. These scriptures are all inspired by Holy Spirit himself, which is God. So when you run into scriptures like these, it's important to not only jot them down and take notes, but to go home and to reread them. To reread them over and over again until you start thinking about the scripture and what it means to you. How to apply it to your personal life. Because it's not going to do you any good just coming from the pulpit down in the midst of a Sunday service. Because in the midst of a Sunday service, there's so much sword being sliced in the church that the enemy, even though he loves to work his way into the church, he, he, he fears the word of God. When the word is coming forth, he backs away. He backs up. So this is not where you need the scriptures. This is not where you need them. You need them at home. You need them at the workplace. You need them when you're visiting family. You need them at the grocery store. Sister Erica, months ago, got attacked verbally at a grocery store. For no reason, because she was taking too long or something. The enemy will rise up to see, are you who you say you are in public? Because if he can make a fool of you in public and put your Christianity in a place to look bad in public, he'll do that. He'll do exactly that. So I challenge some of you to start taking notes. Start taking notes. Because these literally are weapons of mass destruction that will save your life. Some of them apply to you. Some of them don't apply to you at this moment, but they will apply to you later on in life. You know, so I recommend that you start taking these scriptures one at a time and make it a point like repeat it over and over to yourself to the point where you don't have to look and you can say, you memorize that thing. Once you memorize that thing, practice it a couple of days in a row, practice it a couple of weeks in a row. Memorize that thing, like literally write it on the tablet of your heart because there will come a day where Bibles are not going to be allowed. People hate God. The world hates God. This is Satan's playground. And God's allowing Satan to run wild. And he's going to allow Satan to do a lot more. So you got to be prepared when there is no Bible to read, what do you read? Well, I know, I know, I know there's several people in this room right now that you don't need a song to be playing and you can verbatim say the words of a song. Why? Because you repeated that thing over and over again until you got it. You've got to take that approach with the word. You've got to take that approach with the word. You've got to put yourself in a position where naturally you're meditating on the word day and night. Day and night. Why? Because it's going to help you. It's going to bless you. It's going to grow you. It's going to stretch you. It's going to put you in a position to become this church needs leadership. We're not going to stay this size forever. We need leaders. We got kids showing up now. We got Sister Maria who's not here tonight, but she brought her two daughters on Sunday. We got Julie. We got James. There's going to be more kids showing up. We need leaders. Mom, prepare yourself. You know, anybody else who wants to help out mom? Because it shouldn't be every week Sister Maria. It shouldn't be every week teaching children Bible. But we need to set up a curriculum as a church to make sure that the adults are getting fed without distraction and the kids are also getting fed. Why? Because what you teach them in their youth, they'll not depart from when they grow old. How do I know? 
Because as, as many years as I try to run away, she planted something. She planted something. And every opportunity she got, even though I didn't want to hear it, she watered it. She watered it. She watered it. And in doing so, it took root deep down within me. It took root. It took root deep down within my little sister. It took root. And regardless of how many years we, we strayed away from God and strayed away from church and strayed away from the message, strayed away from mom even because today I'm not in the mood to hear about Jesus. Regardless of how often we attempted to stray away, it took root. And when something takes root, it begins to grow. When something takes root and gets watered, it begins to grow strong. And what happens eventually? It produces a fruit. It's my testimony. I'm a pastor because it took root. It got watered. It grew strong. And it produced a fruit. The fruit now being Pastor Jason Oquendo teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I, I, I highly recommend that you start picturing who you are in Christ. Am I a teacher? Am I somebody who got oratorical skills? Am I somebody who has the patience to deal with children? Am I somebody who's techie and into computers that can work in the sound booth? Am I somebody who likes to sing? Am I somebody who loves to read and write and express? Listen, whatever you love to do, tap into that and ask yourself, how can I use that for Jesus? Because CCC needs it. We need leaders. I don't want to do this by myself. I don't, I don't, I don't want to get to the point where I get discouraged and say, I, I'm, I'm all by myself here. I'm on an island of CCC all alone. And, and, and I'm feeling discouraged. I don't, I don't want to get to that point. I don't ever want to get to that point. I want to know that God has literally established CCC and he put people in a position to say, that is an opportunity. It's a baby church. I can become the best version of myself in that baby church. To the point where I become the man or the woman of God that God ordained me to be when CCC is fully grown and blossoming and doing what it does. Don't wait. Don't wait till we grow and, and God starts sending leadership here to then try to become or then feel some type of way when... God sent a minister, or God sent a singer, or God sent a teacher, or God sent somebody else. Don't feel some type of way when Pastor Jason gives them the part and gives them the position. And get, You're here. You're here. Step up. Become. Become. I'm not going to hold you back. I encourage leadership. I encourage leadership. Why? Because I was in the pew one day and somebody had to see leadership in me and give me an opportunity. That opportunity done flourished a little bit. Yeah. And it's only, it's only going to get better. Why? Because I'm not satisfied. My satisfaction comes when I see him in the clouds. <laughs> he being Jesus. When I see him in the clouds, that's when, that's when my thirst is completely quenched. Let's get this thing. Let's, 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 let's get this Christ walk down path. Even if it hurts. Even if it's hard. Even if it's challenging. So what? Let's do it anyway because whether you serve him and are obedient to him or not, there's going to be challenges. You could be in the world and people are going to pass away. You can be in the world and people are going to get sick. You can be in the world and affliction will come somehow, some way, whether financially, whether mentally, whether emotionally, whether physically. Something is going to happen. That's the world we live in. It's life. But why not do it with Christ where you're guaranteed eternal life? 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Nice and loud, Sister Dora. All right. For we, walk, for we walk by faith, not by sight. 
Read number eight too. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Listen. For we walk by faith and not by sight. What does that even mean to us believers? What does walking by faith and not by sight mean? Anybody? Bible study. Janika. Belief. What does belief mean? Uh, belief means trusting in God and knowing that he'll make a way whatever your situation is. I like to use stupid examples when it comes to belief so people get it. So people get it, right? So there's a snake, a venomous snake in the toilet. And if you go and use the bathroom, it's going to rise up out the toilet and bite you in the bunk. If you believe me, are you going to use the bathroom? No. Why? Because believing something provokes a behavior. You, 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 got, you got to make sure that that gets in. It says, walk by faith and not by sight. I have faith that Jesus Christ is who he says he is. I have faith that he died on that cross. I have faith that he rose from the dead. He's resurrected. I have faith that he sent down his Holy Spirit to anyone who accepts. That's me. I accepted him. His Holy Spirit lives in me. Believing that looks like something. How you doing? My name's Pastor Jason O'Quinlan. A lot of people still don't believe it. Believing that looks like something. Walk by faith and not by sight. What, what does it look like to you, Brother Juan? Walk by faith and not by sight. What does that look like to you, my man? Um, just trusting before you even see anything happening. You believe that it's going to happen regardless, whether it's in a little bit or if it's in a different season. The word believe is not even in the sentence. But yet, two people keep talking about the word believe in the midst of expressing themselves on what this means. It's trust. It's trust. Do you trust them? <laughs> it says, we are confident. Confident. Sister Johanna, what, is, what does the word confident mean to you? Confident. So, confident to me is just knowing. Um, knowing. Knowing. You can stop right there. Just knowing. I just know. My mom says, I know that I know that I know. <laughs> just knowing. Do you know? <laughs> Do you know? It says, we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Anybody who's a believer, regardless to how much they love life, should want Jesus Christ to come. You should want to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Because that's forever. No pain, no affliction, no hurt, no frustration, no disappointment, none of that. That should be your heart's desire. You should long for it. If you don't, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? If, if the goal is not to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. What are we doing here? Who are we? What are we? That's the goal. That's the goal, nephew. Is to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. That's the goal. Galatians 6, 9. Galatians 6, 9. Praise 
God. Praise God. Galatians 6. Galatians 6. Galatians 6. You dare to read or no? It's up to you. No pressure. Read for me. 6. It says, and let us not be weary in well-doing. Let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. I know sometimes it gets a little challenging to maintain a good attitude. I suffer from bad attitude syndrome. I suffer from it. That's a Jason Oquendo condition. Bad attitude syndrome. I have to fight to have a good attitude. I have to fight on my knees. I have to fight spiritually. I have to fight with my study time. Literally, I suffer from bad attitude syndrome. If that's a condition, I suffer from it. <laughs> Boy, look at him. And let us not be weary. Don't get tired of doing good. Don't get tired of it. It's easy to give up. Don't get tired of doing the right thing. Don't get tired. Listen. Doing counseling sessions, the counselor said, whenever you feel some type of way, pray. Grab the other person by the hand and pray. Grab it, pray. Just pray. Why? Because it's hard to stay angry and frustrated when you call the name of Jesus. It's almost a Debbie Downer on your frustration. Like you want to be mad. Ooh, you got me so upset. But you call upon the name of Jesus and it's just like, I got to forgive. I have to forgive you. You have to strategize forgiveness coming forth. You have to strategize good behavior coming forth. You have to work out mentally how to maintain a positive attitude. You have to work it out. Like you literally have to fight with self because self is naturally sinful. Self is naturally carnal. Self is naturally negative. Naturally. You wake up a sinner, and you have to battle that. You have to die to self and get in the spirit. What's the fruit of the spirit? Joy. Peace. Joy. You have to find a way in the midst of not wanting to be happy because something happened that made you feel some type of way to say, I'm going to be happy in the midst of it. I'm going to be happy in spite of. I'm going to be happy no matter what. Why? Because I'm not going to give strength to this thing to consume me and make one bad day turn into two. Make one day of no prayer turn into two days of no prayer. Make one day of no scripture turn into two days of no scripture. Listen, what you starve dies and what you feed grows. You have to feed the spirit, man. You have to starve the flesh. And I'm not just talking about fasting. I'm talking about strategically, just strategically battling the man in the mirror and saying, you're going to live this life in spirit. You're going to. You're going to be nicer. You're going to say hello to people. You're going to say I'm sorry to people. You're going to shut up and stop gossiping about people. You got to talk to the man in the mirror and let him know what he's going to do and what he's not going to do. You got to put your flesh in subjection to the spirit. The word. It's the word. It's the word. Why do you get motivated when you leave here? Why? Because the word came forth. It's the word. You don't need me. You got everything you need in this book. 
I just like to talk about it. But you can read it and feel the same way. Let us not be weary in well-doing for in due season, in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. Nephew, what does that mean to you? That, um, Use your big boy voice. Come on. Talk to me. That depending on what we give, we get back. Okay. It says, if you believe, if you believe, then your behavior is going to demonstrate it. Your actions is going to demonstrate it. Your talk is going to demonstrate it. Your walk is going to demonstrate it. And, and you're not going to allow yourself to get tired in demonstrating it, right? Why? Because I know, I know that I'm not doing this just for fun. I'm not doing it for fun at all. I'm doing it because I believe that heaven exists. I'm doing it because I believe that Jesus Christ wanted me to spend all eternity with him and he did something about it. He didn't think about it. He didn't talk about it. He walked it out. All the way to the cross and beyond. Hallelujah. <laughs> so because he did that, I'm going to do this. And I'm not going to allow myself to grow weary in doing good. I'm not going to allow myself to faint not. Why? Because heaven is the goal and nothing else matters. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Listen. Today, can I share something real fast? Sorry. Come on. Um, just what you were actually sharing earlier. Um, I was actually talking to someone today, and I can, I can see it wasn't going good. And I was actually reminded of what you said. Sometimes the, the holiest thing you can do is to shut up and not say nothing. And in the text message, I said, I need to shut up right now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I literally said that in a text message. I told, I told the person, I need to shut up right now in the name of Jesus. And I felt so much better after that. And I was reminded what you said. The whole, sometimes the holiest thing you can do is to shut up. And I'm like, man, I, hear you, I heard dad's voice right in my mind. I'm like, you know what? I felt so much better after that. I gave it a little time in between. I apologize after that. After, you know, after, my, after you know, me obviously getting a little aggressive and... Everything was fine after that. You know what I mean? So, again, it's called up on the name of Jesus. You know the, what I mean? The, the, those words right there, those little those little minor testimonies, like that right there, the one you gave last Tuesday, those little minor testimonies, they're important. You want to know why? Because it makes me realize that, that this is not for nothing. That this matters. Amen. That, the, that when the enemy says, hang it up. Because it ain't growing. Hang it up. I see faces. I see faces. I, I hear. Shut up in the name of Jesus. Testimonies. I, I'm encouraged, Pastor. I hear it. I hear it. I hear it. <laughs> With that little southern twang. And also, too, I put lines. I used to do this little, you know, the little white line they say or Come whatever. On. Just for example, like having meetings and not want to be a part of these meetings. And I'm like, oh, Come I got on. something to do knowing that I don't. Like, I quit lying. I just won't say nothing. Listen, listen. Some people quit drinking. Some people quit smoking. Some people quit all types of different activities. My sister just confessed she quit lying. I need some more of those in the house. Amen. Come on. I quit lying. That's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. I quit lying. Put a date on that. Put a date on that so in a year you can say, I've been lie free for 365 days. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. That's an accomplishment in the world we live in. That's an accomplishment in the world we live in. Mm. Philippians 4.19. Come on. Philippians 4.19. These scriptures, I'm telling you, there's something about these scriptures, man. There's something about these scriptures. Just both all types of feelings inside of me. I, I, I was pregnant 
and I gave birth to CCC, right? But now I feel like I'm pregnant again. <laughs> I feel like I'm pregnant again. And CCC's already born. So, so what's coming forth next? Get ready. Get ready. Hallelujah. Get ready. Sister Erica. Philippians 4, 19. Like TD says, if you have it, say amen. If you don't say, wait a minute. Amen. God will liberally supply fill until full, and your every need according to his riches in glory, Christ Jesus. See, this is where you need to take that mustard seed faith and apply it when you run into something like this. It says, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I have need of some things. I have need of some things. Everybody in this room has need of certain things. This scripture is saying that by Christ Jesus being who he is, by Christ Jesus doing his job, by Christ Jesus paying the ultimate price, by Christ Jesus accomplishing Calvary's cross, by Christ Jesus not giving up. By Christ Jesus walking a perfect walk. By Christ Jesus being exactly who he set out to be on this earth. Your need will be met. You just got to have faith. Trust. You got to believe. You got to know. Y'all should be planning to give him a Father's Day gift. I, I, I don't deserve it. Ask my kids. I don't deserve it. I don't deserve to be celebrated on that day. I don't. I'm, 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 I'm working on redeeming myself with spiritual children. Amen? Amen. With spiritual children. I'm, work, I'm working on it, son. Hallelujah. How am I doing? Pretty good. Real Praise good. God. Praise God. I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm a work in progress. Because there's some days where I need holy water dealing with my spiritual church. Yes, sir. Oh, here. <laughs> but y'all should be planning to celebrate him. Praise God. Yeah, it should be an everyday thing, but on days like Father's Day, on days like Christmas. Listen, he's God. And he's been so good. None of us are worthy. The Bible says our righteousness, every one of you, the best version of yourself is like a filthy rat in comparison to who Christ Jesus is. We're not worthy of this privilege. This is a privilege. We're not worthy of this opportunity to get into heaven. We deserve hell. Midnight, write a love letter to him. Do something. Write a love letter to him. And, 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 and tell him, you know what? You know what, Daddy? You know what, Abba? In the next 365 days, I'm going to do this for you. And do it. So that the next Father's Day, you can say, see, Daddy, I did it. I did it. And now, I'm going to commit to this. Put yourself, listen. When I was in prison, I used to do something with the men, and it, it, it changed different men. It, it literally, genuinely changed different men. You got to be strategic. You got to be strategic. So I used to tell them, if you don't have goals, you're never going to achieve anything. You got you to gotta set some goals in your life, right? So I used to have them do something real simple. I want you to write me on a piece of paper three long-term goals which are going to occur within the next five years 
and three short-term goals that are gonna occur within the next 12 months. Three long-term goals and three short-term goals, right? Some of them challenging but achievable. Some of them easy, achievable, right? When you reach that goal, whether it's short-term or long-term, you're gonna do two things. And it's gonna change your life forever. It's gonna change your life forever if you obey the words coming out of my mouth. This is what I used to tell them. I'm telling you today. One, you're gonna reward yourself because you deserve a reward for achieving a goal. Reward yourself. So on that piece of paper, when you put the three short-term goals, I also want you to write the reward. Write the reward. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go to my favorite restaurant and I'm gonna splurge like if I got money like that. Whatever it may be, I'm gonna buy myself X, Y, Z. I'm going to do this. I'm gonna go to this location. I'm gonna make sure that I take my taxes and instead of cashing up on every one of my bills, I'm gonna get a plane ticket to go to this place that I've always wanted to go. But you set yourself up to reward yourself, right? So you're gonna do two things. One, you're gonna reward yourself. Two, you're gonna replace that goal. So you always have three. What does that do for you? For the rest of your life, you will be achieving goals. For the rest of your life, you will be goal-oriented. And for the rest of your life, you will be celebrated, even if it's just by yourself. Getting rewards for achieving success at what you set out to do. It's a beautiful process. It's a beautiful process. Put yourself in a position to be rewarded and celebrated in life. If they ain't going to do it for me, I'm going to do it for myself. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Sometimes you've got to strategize on how to become who you're going to become. But my God shall supply all. That word. I run into this word in different scriptures. It matters. It matters. Because if, if, if you have a relationship with Daddy, if you have a relationship with Holy Spirit, if you have a relationship with, with your Lord and Savior, you can bring this to Him in your prayer. And you can say, Daddy, but you, you said in your word, all of my needs, this is an area of need in my life. This, this is an area where I'm lacking. This is an area where I'm falling short, and I believe your word. I, I believe it. I, I've done applied it to my life every which way I know how. And if I'm missing something, reveal it to me, because I'll do that too. I just want to obey your word. But I've obeyed it, and now I'm asking you, Daddy God. I'm asking you to take Philippians 4.19 and apply it to this situation, because there's a need right here. And you can be specific. problem is sometimes we're not specific. The problem is sometimes we're not praying the right prayers. We get, we, get, we get all caught up in routine and religiosity sometimes, you know? We get caught up in, 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 in I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to praise God for a little while first and then I'm going to thank God for a little while. Listen, when you don't know how to pray, yeah, it's good to set something up to put you in a position to learn how to pray and to get prayer flow in your life, right? But there's some times when there's not even a word that can come out of my mouth and I just got to go, I just got to, I just got to express how I feel with tears, with nothing else but tears, Sometimes I don't even got words to say, so I'm going to draw them a little picture. This is my need, this right here. Look, look. I don't even know how to talk about it right now. I don't even know how to express it. But look, Daddy, this is my need. And you said, you said in Philippians 4.19, all of my needs, I believe that word. I'm claiming that word. I declare and decree that word over this need. Oh, man. Praise the Lord. 
it's time to get up close and personal with the Holy Scriptures and with Heavenly Father in prayer. Why? Because the end is near. The end is near. If Jesus is not coming from the clouds, that doesn't mean the end is not near for you. Your end could be tomorrow. It's not guaranteed for anybody. We need to live Bible today. We need to honor God today. We need to surrender today. Amen. That needs to be the approach. That needs to be the mentality. There's so many people living like, like tomorrow's guaranteed for them. I've gone to more funerals with this woman than I've gone to like great dates. Like she's my date to funerals. We go to funerals. Hey, what do you guys do for fun? We, you know, lay people to rest. <laughs> In peace, hopefully. Well, we've gone to seven. In less than a year, seven funerals ago. It's crazy. People are living life ignorant to the fact that you have an adversary that is going to do anything and everything. Anything, and I, I love him. I love him. I love his spirit. He's always looking to take care of somebody. That's a beautiful thing. I pray, I pray that spirit over your wife, over your life. Amen. Amen. The enemy is looking to do anything and everything to make sure that heaven is not the goal for your life. And you guys need to go home with that in your mind. Instead of talking about this situation or that situation, you need to go home knowing that there is somebody literally, literally setting up a plan, setting up a plot, setting up a scheme, setting up a trauma, setting up an affliction so that you don't make it to heaven. What are you going to do about it? What is going to be your counter to that plan, to that plot, to that scheme, to that device? It's, it's that serious. It's that serious. You guys don't even know how much you're hated. You're hated. And because you're hated, you have to love. You have to love. You have to love like you've never been hurt before. That's crazy. You have to love like you've never been hurt before. For years, I hated my biological father. Why? Because I turned into him. I never met him, and yet I put my, my daughters, I got six daughters, I put them in the same position. I forgive my father, whoever, whoever he is. Wherever he is, if he's gone and dead, I forgive him. I forgive him. I forgive him. I want you to hear it first. I forgive him in the name of Jesus. Amen. And that needs to be the approach to Christianity. To, to look at your weakness and say, you know what? I'm going to turn that into a strength. My family's always trying to celebrate me on Father's Day. And I get so frustrated. I get so frustrated because I don't deserve it. And then my mom will say something like, oh, but when you was with your children for the short amount of time that it was, whether it was two, three years, four years, you was a great father. But I didn't finish the job. Don't let that be your story in Christianity. Don't be an incomplete Christian. something about this book there's something about this book like if you don't spend time in this book there's a problem because this book will change your life this book will change your mentality this book will change the address of your eternity praise God
God. Praise God. Let's go to my favorite Bible verse in the whole world. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. I love this, man. I love this verse so much. I love this verse so much because sometimes we think we know something. Sometimes we think we're so smart. Sometimes we think we got all the sense. This verse, like, it ministers to my heart. It ministers to my heart. Why? Because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, like, what I know or don't know. It doesn't matter what I've done or haven't done. Listen, I'm going to read it to you. I'm going to read it to you like I love this verse. Verse 5. Trust. There goes that word, son. Trust. Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord with all. There goes that word again. All. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Here's the part that I love. And lean not on thine own understanding. Sometimes we think we know. Listen, we know nothing. We know nothing. I don't care how much education you got. You know nothing. You know nothing. And, and that's the mentality that you got to take. I know nothing. Why? So that Holy Spirit can teach you. So that Holy Spirit can educate you on spiritual things. Lean not on your own understanding. It says, but in all, there goes that word again, in all thy ways, in all, in everything that you got going on inside of you, in everything that you got planned, in everything that you possess, in everything that you do that identifies you as you to the world, in all of your ways, acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. It's saying, add God to everything. Bring God in to every situation, to every circumstance, to every thought process, to every activity, to every action. Bring God in. And it, it attaches a promise to it. It says if you do that, he will direct your path for the rest of your life. Listen, if he directs your path, it's fail proof, it's fall proof, it's hell proof. Trust. That's such a hard thing to do. Practice it. Practice it. Practice trusting again. Some of you have reason not to trust. Some of you have reason to have the insecurities that you have. Some of you have reasons for that, right? But the enemy feeds on that. Practice trusting again. Practice it. I know they hurt you. I know it didn't feel good. the enemy is going to thrive on you focusing on that insecurity as opposed to focusing on the trust in God part. Trust in the Lord. Not man. In the Lord. With all, with all your heart. Listen, I promise you, Life will change if you start trusting, like genuinely trusting God. But there's only one way to trust Him, right? Reality. Yeah. Son, if I say, be here at 5.45, I'm going to be there. Are you going to show up at 5.45? I'm going to show up at 5.40. Why? Because I trust that you'll be there at the time. But your character... Trust that I'm going to be there so he's going to show up. So here's the thing. We've established 
relationship by talking to one another and spending time with one another. So now he trusts because he's gotten to know some of my characteristics. He said, I'll be there because you're going to be there. Why? That's your character. That's who you are. That's what he said. When you spend time with God in the word, you get to know his character. You get to know who he is and why he is. And it puts you in a position to have something to trust. I know he's going to do it. Why? Because he's not a man that he shall lie or a son of man that he shall repent. He said it. I believe it. That settles it. I love Tuesday nights. I leave here brand new Amen. Tuesday nights. I think I like Tuesdays better than I like Sundays. Crazy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It feels more personal. Trust him. Get into the word and find something to trust. Start reading something every day. And don't stop reading until you find one verse that you can say, I'm going to trust what he just said right there. And learn that. Write it down. Put it in your pocketbook. Put it in your wallet. Pull it out every day. Put it on your mirror in the bathroom. Put it somewhere. Put it in your car. Put it on your steering wheel. Put it somewhere where you can see it and read it every day and tell him, you said it. I believe it. That settles it. I trust you. It'll change your life. It'll change your life to trust the character of God. It'll change your life to trust Abba. He is not a man that he shall lie, or a son of man that he shall repent. It's money in the bank of God. Hallelujah. That's our time for today. That's our time for today. Anybody have... Any prayer requests?